so to go on from what I said yesterday about vocal rest um, the space that opens up when you are in a deeper listening of the body and its needs actually pays dividends in terms of giving you more room to be creatively inspired and to fill up with ideas. So today things have shifted for me. Um, my airways are a little bit clearer. I'm still not feeling 100%. Uh, and it's kind of moved down into the chest a little bit. So the register of my voice is lower today. Um, but I, I'm kind of buzzing with lots of ideas and in order to bring those through in a way that feels to be embracing the inspiration and the energy, I really feel that I need to use my voice. So, um, it has cleared up enough for me to feel that doing a little bit of vocalization is not going to be damaging because that's the main concern that one has when it's anything related to bronchial or sinuses or any area there um, with the mucous membranes where there's inflammation just so that you're not straining forcing or causing damage when you have uh, tightness in the muscles or in the fascia and also in the tendons around the neck uh, and also when the soft tissue in the throat is feeling a little bit vulnerable as well. Uh, but yeah, just to give you um, a taste of some of that inspiration coming through today and also to give you an example of singing not at full voice um, which can still be a really energetically rewarding experience you're still connecting with sound and vibration um, but something to bear in mind is that because there's maybe not as much uh, power and strength from the diaphragm or in your breathing capacity uh, with the lungs, if that's been restricted for a few days, you're not so much projecting uh, out big sound, which kind of lends itself naturally to a more inquisitive, gentler approach and much more sounding within yourself, which can be a really nice exercise and way of directing a little bit of energy and healing to anywhere in the body that you feel needs it. Um, so kind of moving into the sound healing territory in terms of ways of using the voice, thinking about that in quite a literal sense. Um, but yeah, I feel like I really want to direct some energy to the heart space to open that up, uh, which I know is an energetic gateway and point between, you know, the lower and upper energy centers in the body. So I'm feeling quite soft today and I feel that that is going to give me some support in this area here and around here, which is still feeling a bit meh. <laughs> Spiral into earth and ground Calling on this ancestral wisdom that I
rosy places that you know the heart sinks into. Taken in this new found Channel wisdom through these clairs To see, to feel, to know, to breathe To sense, to find, to catch, to be Been asking all these layers to permeate through me Today let me breathe with ease Softer sounds and lower frequencies Embrace the range of all these densities Trust this sound is exactly what I need So hypercritical analytical voice says that it sounds weak today that it's not really well supported by the breath, um, that there's a lot of airy quality, um, which technically speaking, and from a kind of vocal pedagogy point of view, uh, that's correct. Like I am aware that the muscles and the diaphragm and um, just in general my energy levels are not like at their best so it's not supporting that kind of really full true resonant sound that I'm usually kind of aiming for um you know this idea of clarity ringing out like a bell and it kind of being a, a piercing quality that just happens to be aesthetically a sound that resonates well with me and something that I feel offers the body a lot of feedback, a lot of vibrational feedback. You can really sense chest resonance and uh, feel it around the head as well. But in fact, my desire to move energy and, and work with the voice today kind of has overpowered my, um, you know, my physical resistance to that process as well. And I've kind of checked in and feel like, okay, yeah, I can, I can do a little bit of work today, gentle work, just so that I can feel emotionally in a good place. Um, because that is also a crucial element to your overall health and well-being. of course, is, is how you feel on the emotional level. So with that in mind and with the awareness and um, conceptual framework of the voice as a healing tool to facilitate relaxation um, and other really beautiful, peaceful sensations and the power of that, I feel I can give myself some nourishment um, in that way. So if I take the voice within me that is not so critical and analytical but more intuitive um, and grounded in the body and grounded in kind of uh, gentleness and acceptance then I can actually connect with lots of different elements of the frequencies that have been coming through and kind of yeah find a, a softer quality 
and appreciate that for what it is and what it offers um, and be aware that the vulnerability that comes with sharing uh, when you're not at your, you know, your best, your brightest, your fullest, that is exposing for anyone, um, particularly if you're sharing in a space with other people and you don't want to give the impression that you are weak or um, you know that that you have vulnerabilities which as a human being as an animal um, as an energy body of course you do um, and we can only hope to find balance in day to day so that we have a relatively strong constant in terms of our chi, our life force, um, and our kind of feeling of stability. But yeah, it's it's okay for there to be days where that doesn't feel to be quite up to scratch either. And, and those days provide just as much inspiration, information and, and learning um, as anything else. So yeah, I just felt called to to share those insights as they're coming through for me and hope that that might resonate with some of you and um yeah so definitely rest is is really an important part of the creative process and recuperation recovery renewal that prefix r e it's very, very timely with this um, transition that we're moving into now with a bigger cyclical shift towards spring. So, yeah, think of yourself as the snowdrop pushing your head through the cold, snowy, frosty ground and kind of poking your head out and being like, oh, I'm not, I'm not very sure about this. This doesn't feel to be spring quite yet. But, um, you know, the snowdrop is our first flower that comes through here in the UK at this time. And she is so pure and white and beautiful and, um, yeah, has lots of wisdom to share. So, blessings.